Somebody say something really funny for the intro that we can that we can do. I have a Vajinji where my pee pee should be. <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> oh, my mom listens to this. Welcome everybody this week to the Damage Per Second podcast. I'm Jay Bruno, your host, with Brett and Keith. Hello, Hi, I'm Keith. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I think we, we heard which one was Keith. So this week, Brett is playing Spelunky as we stream. Our topic this week is going to be licenses within games, meaning other franchises that either became games or perhaps franchises that spawned outside of games after they were games. So, for example, Star Wars, obviously. Batman. I think Assassin's Creed is getting a movie of some sort coming up. That'd be a good example. I Boy mean, to man. Sp Boy to man. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure, Spider-Man. <laughs> Spoiled man. <laughs> so to get started, let's talk about what we've been playing. I'm gonna go first this week, so that I can say uh, I got back to playing Binding of Isaac. Keith talks about this a lot. I love that game. I recently started playing again. I did not play much once after Birth came out. I just watched a bunch on YouTube. And I love that shit. I love it. <laughs> so good. Uh, I, I feel very well versed in the game, not from playing it, but just by watching other people play it. It's a very watchable game. That's for sure. Uh, Keith, I'm curious, um, are you, have you guys, like, gotten a bunch of stuff already, or? In, in Afterbirth? Yeah. yeah. We've been playing on Jen's account, I think. Let's see how many, she's got 86% of the achievements. Um, and then I got, I don't know, I probably have somewhere close to that. I still so, on, we play a lot together, but uh, I don't play too much apart anymore. Because I'll yeah, usually I was be playing of... a different game. Of seeing if Tara wanted to try the co-op. We did one time, and she she liked it surprisingly. She normally doesn't like games where you just outright murder things. And that <laughs> game particularly has some very strange imagery. And uh, I don't know if... I She seemed to like it, though, so maybe we'll do some more <laughs> of it. But for those yeah. of you that don't know, a long time ago, I wrote an article about the ending of The Binding of Isaac, because it's very vague. There's a lot of religious imagery in the game. It's basically about a, a child who is running from his mother who's trying to kill him because his mother hears a voice from God and uh, he's trying to run away from her. So he's going deeper and deeper into his basement. Um, it's all metaphoric, I believe. And so I wrote a, an article and then the game creator tweeted at us and said this is like the most accurate description of the ending. That was he a long like, time ago, though. This is by far the most mind-blowingly accurate, you know, <laughs> summary of the end. It was, like, as complimentary as it could possibly be. It was super, like, flattering, I think. Right. So that was awesome. And um, I'm pretty sure the game theorists, um, if you're familiar with the game <laughs> theorists, um, Matt Pat, I think, is what he goes by. Um, he made one for Binding of Isaac. And, look, everything in the world these days is derivative in some way, right? So if he wants to take my idea and put it in his video, I don't care. <laughs> but there were some things that he said that were almost verbatim from my original article. We're calling just, you out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> DPS podcast starting some drums, but that, yeah, I was a little disappointed. I got some private messages of Annoying. people that were like, you should write another one for Afterbirth. I'm like, yeah, maybe, but I, I also don't, don't really feel like having it blatantly stolen again. And, and monetized for a lot of money, you know, because that's a huge channel. And again, of course, it's derivative. If you, you know, everything's derivative in some way or another, but it's a, a little upsetting. Well, and for a long time, if you Googled, like, Binding of Isaac Explained, or even, I mean, Binding of Isaac Story or Endings or something like that, this would be the very first, art, I mean, article, right at the top for a long time. So it would not be difficult to find literally the top post. <laughs> but right. Oh well. It's still there. Know. It's still it's still up there if you search for for Binding of Isaac endings. And then I wrote a follow up on Reddit too for when Rebirth came out. But anyway, um, yeah, I love that game. Um, it's it's a roguelike, very similar to Spelunky, similar to to FTL. The challenge is very very high, but the the idea is the the gameplay is very short, usually under. 30 to 45 minutes, somewhere in that range. FTL can last a little longer. But the idea is everything is randomly generated in some way or another. There's some controls that make it so that it, you're never, like, super underpowered or maybe overpowered. But 
the idea is it's random and then but every time you beat it or you you know you do something special each time you can find secrets and unlocks new things which i i don't know it's very an appealing way to play a game in my opinion yeah what i find enjoyable is that there are things that are overpowered and underpowered and he puts some effort into balancing it but the best part is that he doesn't really have to because it's all random <laughs> and yeah. you're just as likely to get a totally shitty build and since you go through and get a ton of different items, like, I don't know, I, I find that you end up having challenging runs most of the time. And, uh, you know, it's not super easy to consistently break shit because it's all random and there are hundreds of items. So if there's a really overpowered item combo, well, you have an extremely low chance of getting that specific combo in any given run. So I like that kind of thing. Yep. It's a good game, and I, I like how you just kind of unlock more and more tidbits of it every time you win. Yeah. It's like that system of progression I enjoy a lot. I've always been a sucker for achievements. Not like shitty achievements that just require grinding, but achievements that lead to unlocking more stuff. It's really, really neat. Yeah. Have you unlocked the, uh, well, I don't know if people care, but there's like a secret character that you get after he added greed mode, but it requires donating tons and tons and tons of money. Yeah beating green would, mode a million times. <laughs> I think that character Super is the hardest to play as, especially because by the time you unlock it, it would imply that you already you would have unlocked the holy mantle for the lost along the way. Yeah. So that makes the lost a lot easier. Like it's not easy, but it's easier whereas the keeper literally I think is it much harder. As good. He's just yes. like literally twice as good now. <laughs> yeah. I would recommend it though, especially if you're looking for a challenge. I was playing it earlier before uh, my stream pooped out, which is why Brett is streaming because I uh I had some internet issues right before this, but that's what I've been playing. Keith, what what else have you been playing this week? Uh, so um, Jen was down this weekend, and we I played a bunch of uh, we played a bunch of Binding of Isaac, and there were certain things where, like yeah, we you know like so greed mode. You also get you know the more times that you beat greed mode with a certain character, the higher percent chance you have to break the greed donation machine that you donate to at the end um, and it goes you know starts at zero then it goes to one percent and goes to whatever and so we beat the whole thing and then it broke literally on I mean we had a one percent chance for it to break and it broke on literally the first time we donated <laughs> and, and on one hand on one hand I mean I was like well you know whatever but we, we got managed to get super overpowered and whatever and you're like on one hand, you know, it says 1%, but on the other hand, you're like, like, that was a 1 in 100 chance. Like, is, I, I don't know, you just wonder if it's possible that there's some other factor that goes into it. Like, if it can tell that you're super overpowered or something, then it, I don't know. Because they are measuring that in other ways to scale bosses, which I don't necessarily like. It's like, it lets you get overpowered. I don't necessarily want to be punished for being good, you know. Yeah, it's like the the scaling armor. So yeah, if you're if you're unfamiliar in this in this game, what what was done with you can get very very overpowered. If you if you know how to play, uh, you can get very very overpowered. It's a very challenging game until you really get the hang of it. And uh, the later bosses that were just added, they made it so that their health basically scales. It's like their health and armor basically scales with how much damage you're doing, how much damage like literal damage per second. <laughs> That's the name of the thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that you do to it so uh, th there's no point in like if you can do a ton of damage it doesn't matter like it's still going to take as long as if you had no damage which is kind of unfortunate yeah. I mean there were a lot of things there were a lot of things that could have been changed about the way that the, the greed donation machine works like however many characters there are they should have just taken 999 which is the max and divided it by the number of available characters and said you can donate 10 coins per run, period, and then, you, and then you have to do it up to that percentage chance, and then you have to do the rest with the other characters, basically. Yeah. It would have kept it like really even, and it would have set the number of times you had to play. And just a ang angry pimpample in the chat says, Wizards Lizard is a good roguelike. I'd like to check that out. And Aldrath is saying, mm -hmm. Binding of Isaac isn't a license. We're talking about what we've been playing this week first, and then we'll talk about licensing. Hold, hold your horses. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me. I'm not very uh, good at Binding of Isaac. 
I haven't really chimed in about it, but I'm terrible at that game. I don't care how bad. overpowered I am, I can really just kill myself. Please. Yeah, everybody can. There's always, you're kind of never s totally safe. What about those Maybe. guys that get like 86 and 0 boss kills or whatever? <laughs> like, what's up with that? Yeah, that's true. I don't... <laughs> Uh, there's got to be like some They're cheating. trick to it or something. Well, I, I mean, mean, they play literally nothing else. Yeah. I just sometimes you go through and you get absolutely terrible items, and I don't necessarily see. Uh, or or maybe they say like, okay, as long as I beat mom, then that counts or something. I don't know, but yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you've I, watched Cobalt Streak. He he streams, and yeah, he had like a like a multi hundred several hundred streak and he just he's just really good at it he can have yeah. like no damage and still be able to win it just he just doesn't get hit it's incredible yeah yeah uh, yeah it's totally possible the people who are super super good they need something to stream every day and they they could just not get you know dodge everything yeah but i played that um we picked up the i picked up the witness and i was playing that Ooh. yeah um the new jonathan blow game uh, it's like a puzzle game, and uh, I mean, you just start, you literally start, it's a beautiful island, and then they have basically a bunch of different, uh, um, I mean, just puzzle panels all over the place. I guess there's like 600 of them in the whole game, and you have to beat like maybe 40% of them, and then you can just beat the game. And uh, they get they get really tough, and there's always some trick to it, and they don't explain it necessarily. You just kind of got to go around and figure out, like, what is the trick to this and uh, so there's a lot of them. They might have something to do with light, like an example. Um, I was going around, and I like couldn't figure out these puzzles. I'm like, I don't get it. Like, what? And a lot of them are based off of a maze in some way or another. Like, you have to, you know, draw this kind of like line through a through a puzzle in a certain direction or something like that. Um, but they, you know complicated in a bunch of interesting ways i kind of hope it's not all maze based like it'd be nice if there were just some like other ones like oh, i don't know matching or something but um but they are fun and he really does like change them up a lot and we haven't even played close to you know all of it so um uh you know but like one i couldn't figure it out and i was looking and then i realized like oh shit it like reveals the correct path if the sun reflects off this panel so you just have to be in the right spot and then you see the sun glint off this thing and then it reveals the right path and then that mechanic is added upon a ton and uh, it's sort of like um, you could probably only really play the game once but it seems pretty long and complex and so that was really fun but I think it's definitely one like play a little bit at once Giant Bomb guys were kind of saying, like, oh, well, yeah, I can't wait to go back. Like, I'm so addicted to it. Like, I can't. That's all I want to play. I didn't really get that feeling. Uh, you know, I you would say, say it's actually pretty. Game. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, again, they, they have to play so many games that any game that comes out that's different, yeah. they're just, they just love it because it's not extremely boring. <laughs> and, uh, I, I I kind of feel like it's pretty easy to put down and go do something else. I actually kind of think maybe you want to only play a little bit at once. What do you think but, of the uh, price point for that? Kind of forty dollars. Yeah, I think it's I think it's too much. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I would uh, I'd wait wait to pick it up. I kind of I picked it up off a CD key website, uh, Steam Redeemable, but uh, it wasn't much cheaper. Usually it's it takes a couple. You know, takes a week or something, at least, to get to a reasonable price, even on those CD key websites. Probably only saved five bucks. Do you but, think Jonathan uh, kind of Blow thought... is going to get into a bunch of internet arguments again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. He's too stupid to understand these puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there is a story, but it's unclear so far. But there's clearly... I don't know, little bits and pieces of story to pick up similar to Braid. You'll just, like, solve something, and then you'll find, like, a little record, like a voice recorder or something and hit play, and it'll be, like, an Albert Einstein quote or something. Um, or you... I got to a place and saw, like, a little bit of... Like a, like a literal live-action video, which is pretty surprising, of a guy talking. 
And um, I don't know if he made this or someone else made it and he just, like, got permission to put it in the game or what. But it just seems like a lot of, like, people's perspectives on life. Um, and that's sort of what I've found so far. But, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. And it's good to play with people. That's sort of why I bought it. I was like, you know what, Jen's going to be here. A puzzle game. That's, like, perfect to play with someone else sitting right next to you. It doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. So um, we did that and it was good. <coughs> but uh, oh. Jen finds it stressful. <laughs> So she enjoys it, but only, I think, like a little bit at a time. And then played some Rock Band at a friend's house yesterday, which is, I haven't played in a while. God, I love that game. Mm-hmm. Just like the perfect party game. And um, what else? Fallout. Fallout 4. Of course yeah. Fallout. <laughs> yep. I don't have much more to say about that, but it is fun. And, uh, oh, you know what? I do have something to say about it, even though I've been talking for a long time. Uh, <laughs> God, shut have... up, Keith! <laughs> <laughs> for once! So what I have to say about that is uh, fairly short, but it's just that um, I'm feeling kind of stressed out about trying to get to maximum relationship with all of the companions in that game. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm not sure I enjoy it. Like, I'm not sure I enjoy doing that, but I still feel compelled to do it. And I feel like I'm worried about who I'm taking on missions and stuff. And I like look up or I try to speculate on like, oh, well, who's going to get, who's going to enjoy this the most? So I guess my recommendation to people, like even though you get really good perks, it's hard if you're kind of a completionist, which I am a little bit. Um, you know, just try not to worry about it. Like just take whatever you want to take and just just don't worry about it too much. Like you're not going to have any trouble beating the game and... You know, don't worry about the extra perks and don't worry about, like, reputation. Just kind of take who you want to take, I think, and mix it up a little bit. But, yeah. That's good advice. You? <laughs> well, <laughs> Big Brett, what have you been playing? And or explain Spelunky that you are playing now. <laughs> well, uh, I'll explain Spelunky. I've, I've played a, a lot of this game. I think I've got, like, 100 hours on this. I mean, that, that's not a lot in the grand scheme of you know. For a little game like this. Uh, so basically what you got to do is go through four worlds and beat the boss and try to get a high score. And it's all randomized, just like uh, roguelikes, like Binding of Isaac. Um, but it's a little more, like, skill-based than any of the other um, any of the other roguelikes I've played. And it's a lot more about learning to use the few items that there are in the game rather than getting lucky. And there's, like, there's certain combinations, like... <laughs> How did you say that in the chat? <laughs> if you get like a shotgun and a jetpack, it's pretty much always a win because it gives you like unlimited mobility and unlimited kill potential, and that's pretty much all that this game is about. And um, it's just a lot about using limited resources for the end. That's about it, and it's really hard. And there's also a lot of traps that you need to learn in order to get better at the game. They've got like arrow traps and little plants that are like, oh, well, I've been jumping on every enemy this whole game. Why don't I just jump on this one? And then it just eats you. So it's like, oh, that's that's really cool. <laughs> and then there's these little spaceships that, you know, they look really innocent, but then they shoot at you and then shoot them and they kill them. You're like, oh, wow, I did it. But then they drop and explode on you and you die. There's just, <laughs> just like a lot of really funny and unfortunate ways to die in this game. And it's depressing as much as it is fun. But... I don't know. I've gotten a lot of enjoyment out of this game. I bought it for both of you guys, and I don't think you even played it because you didn't like it. <laughs> I played it a I couple of times. It. It's it's really hard. I mean, it's 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 mechanically challenging compared to many other roguelites that I've played. I find the control scheme to be a little strange, um, but not bad necessarily. Just different, but it takes some getting used to. Um, I find it to be. I don't know the stuff like like you said, where. You just kind of get killed in ways that you can't predict, and then you go back to the start. But for some reason, it just feels more discouraging in this game to me than it does Binding of Isaac. Maybe it's just because I got through that barrier of entry to Binding of Isaac. Yeah, the problem is that it's the same every time, pretty much. You know, the the items are different, but all the environments and whatnot are the same. Like, you're not... I don't know, you're not seeing totally different things like you do in Finding of Isaac. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. 
Well, and there's not like a million there's, different items. Yeah, there's not a ton of variation with getting. And it's just, um, you know, people say Binding of Isaac is unforgiving. I mean, this game, I mean, playing a normal game in Spelunky is like playing as the poop in Binding of Isaac. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can get like one heart per, f it's worse, because you can get like one part heart per floor, and it's like soul hearts. They're not permanent. I mean, you get hit and the heart's just gone. You start off with how many? Uh, four. So you can literally get hit like four times yep. before you die. So I, I guess that, put simply, that's probably why it's just very unforgiving. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it is. But I enjoyed it. And I liked the items. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So I've been trying for years to get this achievement where you beat the game in eight minutes. And um, I got close one time, I think... So the last boss, I'll explain the last boss, it's not that much of a spoiler, it's, his name's Olmec and he's a big head, and he, all he really does is, he'll, he'll lift up and then he'll fall down and he'll break one line of blocks, and so the idea is that you want to get him to break all the way down into the lava, and so you can manipulate it where you, you just bomb <coughs> one place a lot and it makes a big hole, and, and he falls down it, and so I was like, oh man, there's, I'm, I've got six minutes, I'm on six minutes, I'm doing great, this will be the easiest speed lunky achievement ever so I kill him it was so awesome and then there's some frog that jumps on my head <laughs> right at the very end after <laughs> I kill him and I just fell right into the lava and I was like oh my god <laughs> and I'd been trying it for like two hours oh I was oh. so mad <laughs> so I'm kind of trying it right now we'll see if that actually happens but doubt it good luck thank you and the topic uh, should have just been roguelikes <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, I started playing Batman Arkham Arkham Knight, and that game's really cool too. Uh, streaming that game some, and there's a lot of spooky stuff going on in that game. That's Actually, the newest one, right? Yeah, and it's rate it's rated M for mature, so it's not for the little. I watched little your guys. stream. I yeah, <laughs> I sure. I missed I missed out what you said. Justine? I think we might have lost Yes? Justin. I think we might be losing. You but. said you watched Brett's stream and what? And it was good! That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> <Without me. laughs> um, yeah, so... So yeah, they, they just do a lot of really cool stuff with like, um, the fear serum that the Scarecrow has. And it's it's got like, you know, the Joker is D-E-A-D, -E not to spoil it, so I, I used a cryptic language. And, uh, and but he kind of goes up again, which is really cool. It's a pretty neat way that they do it. been a lot of fun. Kind of goes in line with our talk about licenses. Yeah, I uh, thought it was interesting how they still leveraged him in the game based on what I've seen from your stream. Now, there was some controversy about that game because um, it was pretty... Um, was it just because it was buggy when it came out? Well, the PC version is still a mess, apparently. <laughs> like, it, they they released it, and then they delayed it like, months and months. They took it off the Steam store, like, everybody was complaining about how poorly optimized it was, and all this jargon, because I didn't... I don't know firsthand what was wrong with it, because I didn't have the PC version. Um, but it's just been a mess. Like it, people with two graphics cards say it runs worse than if you only run it on one, and like blah blah blah, all this yeah. madness. And like WB, the uh, or it was Warner Brothers, the publishers, like just never really had answers that were what people wanted to hear. Yeah, and they even they also publish um, Nether Realms game Mortal Kombat X, and it's just been announced that they're they're like releasing a game of the year edition, basically. The new Mortal Kombat with a new multiplayer and whatnot called uh, Mortal Kombat XL, and that's not getting released for the PC when the original X did get released for the PC. So people are livid about that, and they're just like, "We're never trusting this company again with PC games." And Yeesh. So, yeah, that's they're rough. Really digging themselves in a hole. So what system uh, you have it for? Uh, the Xbox One, and it runs nice. fine. It's got some frame issues whenever it's raining outside, but. I mean, what are you uh, using these days? Like, still the HD PBR? I've got a stream? Elgato Game Capture HD 60. Ooh. I don't... 
have a I'm not able to stream the bitrate high enough to actually get 60 second because of my computer limitations. Uh huh. Uh, whenever I upgrade my computer, I'll be able to 1080p, 60 frames per second, all that. Nice. So, and they have so, some like built-in stuff for Xbox and PS4 these days, don't they? Uh, kinda. I mean, it's actually it doesn't work that well with OBS. There's a lot of weird um, compatibility issues. Yeah. Not that I can mention because I don't really. I can't Remember, it took me like a while to really configure the system and get it all working properly. And a lot of it just comes down to like, oh, well, this time I plugged it in and it actually worked instead of last time when I plugged it in. <laughs> Same exact, it's just turning it off and on works. Ooh. All right. How you doing, Justin? You out of I'm commission? Not sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, Okay. Well, that's good. It seems to be going in and out. My internet has is, is been pooping itself all day. I'm not sure why. Hmm. I'll have to reset everything after this. But uh, I guess let's talk more about Batman because, again, it's, it's similar to our topic tonight and it's a good transition. Mm -hmm. So I've played Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, and I think that those two games are excellent transitions. I mean, there have been many other Batman games, right? There's Batman, Lego Batman. But I think Arkham Asylum, the Arkham Asylum series, the Arkham series, rather, has been the... Quintessential Batman game. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, Talk about uh, being the Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yeah, I found that 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 was a pretty seamless transition into the gaming world. So I think that, that yeah, that's a way it right, especially from WB Publishing, which is not known to be great <laughs> as you were, necessarily were just could, talking yeah. about. So I'm surprised yeah. that it was pulled off so well. Is that why uh, you don't have it because of the PC version being so? Are you talking about Arkham Knight? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I just haven't. I just didn't. I didn't play anything past Arkham City, and I think there have been another one in between it that I never played. Arkham Oranges, I never played. I just, I don't know. You just done. I, uh, I liked Arkham Knight. I think I liked Arkham City. Everyone likes Arkham City more, but I didn't. I don't know. Hmm. It's a little too big for me. <laughs> Five. Yeah, I actually liked Arkham Asylum more than City, but I'm really liking uh, or, uh, Arkham Knight. The, I, the first time I tried playing it through, I really hated the bat tank controls. And I, I really don't agree with the fact that there's so much focus on um, on the bat tank. Or the bat mobile, that's what they want to call it. Because it, it, not, it, the game's are all about getting cool gadgets and being the Batman. It's not really about driving a car, but... Now that I've played um, Mad Max, which is another licensed game, that game's driving, which you would think would be, you know, great, is just terrible. It just feels awful to play. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I've learned to appreciate the, the driving in Batman game. Really tight combat works well, unlike a game that's about driving. Well, it looks like that's they the integrated it into the rest of the game pretty well. Like, Batman can kind of do the Batman style thing where he controls the uh, Batmobile remotely. And uh, so, I don't know, integration wise, I think that they did a good job. I think it's probably what it feels like to drive the Batmobile and yeah, be Batman controlling the Batmobile. The Bat Harvey, I am, I am Bat Batman. I am Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, those old Batman movies. That's a, were that's so a weird terrible. quote from the original from Batman Forever. <laughs> oh, me. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't played. Let's see. I I've only Batman. played um, Arkham Asylum. I haven't played Arkham City. I haven't played Arkham Knight. But um, I think I would really enjoy Arkham City. I just haven't played it. Don't know why. But uh, um, I mean, like combat wise, combat wise for me. Arkham Asylum. This is probably all I need of <laughs> that. Like it's 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 fun. Um, the gadgets and stuff is cool, but you know I don't necessarily need to play more games like that. But what I did more. love, yeah, what I did like. I mean, especially considering like, well, you know, and I got Assassin's Creed and Sleeping Dogs and a bunch of other games that have roughly identical combat. Um, but uh, I think. Arkham, I don't, I don't remember. Was Arkham Asylum like the first to have combat like that? I mean, they did a really incredible job. They had a lot of, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty unique game, or at least was when the first one came out. 
Um, and what I really liked about it is sort of the atmosphere and the setting. Um, they did it's, it was a really good marriage between the old cartoon Batman and the gritty, you know, um, you know, uh, Batman Begins and our, um, you know, uh, Dark Knight, and uh, it's it's sort of a nice marriage between them because it's creepy as hell, but uh, you know they've got the original comic voice actors and Mark Hamill in there playing the Joker, and uh, it's kind of funny and goofy, cartoony, the same way the sh- show was. So um, I really enjoyed that. I think they nailed it. And then you know, for anybody who's really into that comic comic book kind of thing, um, there's just tons of stuff to find. You can find information about you know, any Batman villain in the game and just tons of, like, audio logs and all kinds of stuff. And it's actually worthwhile to find, you know, at least for the most part, what I've seen. I don't know, they potentially added stuff in the later games, but, like, everything you find is kind of interesting in some way. It's not just a collectible for the sake of being a collectible. So, yeah. uh, so I like that, yeah. Riddler stuff is great. Um... Yeah, it was, it's, it was, I don't know. Yeah, they just, I, th- I feel like those early games, they just nailed um, and came up with so much unique new stuff uh, for those games from seemingly nowhere. Like, <laughs> um, I wouldn't, you don't necessarily expect, I mean, because like we are saying, you don't necessarily expect these licensed games to be good at all, let alone have a bunch of unique new features that you just haven't really seen in other games. Shrouded right. Life. I think, I guess, the reason why Bat- we're focusing so much on Batman is I think we're, we're kind of all agreeing that that series was a great transition from one media into video games. Like, it was a unique style of combat, but it's what, I think after I played it, I realized, like, this is what I expected Batman to be like if I were playing as Batman. Yeah. So I was pretty pleased with that. Another one that, another franchise that we talk about a lot that I think is applicable obviously is Star Wars but the thing about Star Wars is I feel like before the whole canon wipe so much of it was just reused like how many games how many games it was like 75% of all Star Wars games you were in a snow speeder and you tow cable an ATAT at some point <laughs> and I was like how many times can they just rehash that same shit you can do that in Star Wars Battlefront every single Star Wars game where you, there, there might be some sort of flying segment. You were, there's going to be a part when you're in a speeder and you have to tow cable something every single yeah. time. And it was, it, and the interesting part was that in the movie, the whole thing was like, wow, it's really cool that Luke pulled that off. You know, it was like he used the tow cable from the from the speeder to twist up the ATAT, and or was it Luke who did it? Uh, Keith, I think you're a little confused. Because everybody knows that it was Wedge Antilles and Wes Jansen who tow cabled the at <laughs> I know. I thought I was like, no way. Because Luke lost his gunner. Thing. Yeah, he did the he did the he crashed and lost his gunner, and then he did the lightsaber thing. Yes. Um, but but the whole idea was that it was like really cool that they pulled it off. I'm not necessarily sure that that was like the go-to. I don't know. Just when you see it like sort of rehashed in game after game after game, you're kind of like, eh, it's sort of lost how cool it was in the movies. Somehow. Well, I, I think another thing, too, with Star Wars and the amount of content there is the movies, when you, can, when you compare it to how many hours of gameplay have been created based off of the films, you have to kind of review the limited amount of source material there is. And in every game, it kind of seems like everything that you're doing suddenly, like, you're suddenly, like, way more overpowered than anything was ever let on to be in the movies. Like, if you played the Rogue Squadron series, for example, and if you've played all three, you'll notice that in every single one, for some reason, the the X-Wing lasers just shoot faster. Like, the first one, it seems pr- pretty normal. And then the second one, they're, like, super fast. And then the third one, it's, like, fucking rapid-fire shit. And then <laughs> I think the Forced Unleashed is a good example where it's like, yeah, it's really fun, but at no point in Star Wars history were you made to think that the Force was just, a, like, you could do these absurd yeah. things with it. 
I don't know. That's just my opinion on that. So, like, I like the games and they're fun, but how true they are to, like, the Star Wars franchise and what they feel like. Like, if anything, you know, for all the flack that the new Battlefront gets, it's it feels like Star Wars. It has the charm of the original films. Things don't seem, like, super overdone. Some stuff is, like, thermal imploders, for example. But, like, for the most part, it's people running around with blast rifles and shooting each other, which is what Star Wars is. And if there's a Force yeah. user... Then they have one or two cool powers, but they're not just fucking jumping around and shooting lightning in 18 different directions and lifting, pulling a Star Destroyer out of the sky and all this shit, you know? I don't know. It kind of annoys me that, um, like, I'm not, it doesn't annoy me that much. I'm not, like, super hardcore or whatever, but, uh, it annoys me in games when they're like, yeah, let's just make this character, it's gonna be set in the same time period. And this character is going to be way more powerful than anybody in the movies. Uh, any of the Jedi. It's going to be su super powerful. And so obviously mainly I'm talking about uh, Force Unleashed. Like it's just a little ridiculous. Like they're like, oh, it's going on at the same time. And we just didn't know about this. There was someone who was like, you know, 30 times more powerful than any of the existing Jedi at the time. <laughs> and right. we just didn't know. Like just this, fu you know, and you're just like, oh, fuck off. But... <laughs> I'm glad that they they went, they like steered into it sort of, and they're like, no, oh, yeah, and and yeah, he's he's way more powerful than everybody. And then at the end, he just kills Vader and Luke, and then he becomes a super powerful Jedi. And you're just like, oh, okay, so it's like not okay, so it's not real. It's like an alternate universe kind of thing. And <laughs> and I thought that was pretty cool. I, so I enjoyed that uh, as far as adaptations go. Like I don't like. If it's an okay, so to put this into context of what we're talking about, I don't like when they try to one up like whatever they're adapting to such an extreme uh, extent that I don't know they kind of devalue the subject matter that they're drawing from. <laughs> yes, and I wish I could think of more examples than uh, than that, but um, uh, I don't know. Hmm. You might you might see it in certain other games, but I don't pay, pay, play that many adaptations. Now, an ad adaptation that I liked... Uh, so I mentioned Lord of the Rings War in the North on this podcast before. Um, and I think that one is a example of one that really didn't devalue its subject matter. And it was it's funny because you're like this group of people. And you're like, well, why haven't we heard of these people? They're doing this important mission like alongside the events of uh, Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and, like, I'm not going to... It's not a spoiler to the ending. It's a spoiler to Fellowship of the Ring, but I don't... <laughs> I, I don't care. Are you um, so, at the end of it, like, you kind, you do something that's, like, kind of important, and then someone, like, it's like, oh, it's second in command or whatever, and then you, uh... <laughs> and then someone, like, runs up and they're like, oh, did you hear... Like, Frodo just destroyed the ring, and Aragorn, <laughs> they just killed Sauron's army, and you're like, oh. So they're basically just saying, what you did just didn't matter at all. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. They totally acknowledge that, like, yeah, I mean, you're not Aragorn and Legolas, and you're these other three people who are pretty cool, but, yeah, what you're doing is not that important. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if you hadn't killed his second in command, he would have risen up and, you know, and uh, taken over after Sauron died. But I like that. And then also, Shadow of Mordor is an awesome AAA Lord of the Rings game. You don't uh, even and... barely need to know about Lord of the Rings to enjoy that. Exactly. It's just don't got a lot to... of really cool stuff going on in it. It's just like a good game. Let's say you're a fan of Assassin's Creed, but you're sick of. Uh, Assassin's Creed, <laughs> play Shadow of Mordor, and um, which I think of as like an Assassin's Creed game, but better. And you have a bunch of cool powers, and you're fighting orcs and doing these like brutal takedowns, but you don't feel so awful because they're not human, <laughs> even though they're sentient. So somehow that's okay. <laughs> and uh, and um, I don't know. It's just it's super fun, and the uh, the sort of like orc 
leadership system, and that nemesis army. system, they call it. Nemesis system. That's it's, incredible. It's crazy. It's so much fun. You take them out, and you can install your own guys, and they remember you if they killed you in a certain way or took you down a certain way or you did something. Like, let's you have an encounter with them, and you kick them into a, a fire or something like that. Then they will be burned forever, and they will scream at you next time you see them like you fucking burned me <laughs> it's just oh it's amazing what's it's really so much fun what's cool about that system is they show when every time you die they show the whole lineage of these orcs and like their orc army and every time somebody kills you some underling becomes like a higher rank yeah and so this little orc that killed you is now like a general or a an officer of these orcs and then, like, if one kills you over and over enough, I mean, eventually he could become just, like, the top guy. Yeah. And, like, it all just depends on, like, how you choose your fights and what, whatever. It's all, like, a unique experience depending on who you are. And it's just really cool. Really neat system. And you get, oh, there's a bunch of other cool stuff, too. So you have that, you're immersed in that system. And it, it is amazing, like, the way you see this feeble little orc who you have no respect for. And, uh, you know, if he can kind of... And they will battle amongst themselves as well. And he can take down some higher level orc or something and just m make his way through the ranks. And then he gets this crazy suit of armor, or you know, and, and it always looks different. And he gets all these other abilities, and his army's bigger. And then you see him and you're just like, holy shit, Gripnock yeah. really <laughs> came up in the world. And, <laughs> and you're like scared of him, you know. But then uh, you can you get an ability later where you can take control of people's minds, and it extends beyond just confusing people in battle, which you've seen in tons of games, right? You can take control of orcs. You can make them do your bidding. If they are a general, then you can have this general send his forces against another general when you're trying to take him down. So it manifests itself in the game in really interesting ways, and that's clearly like... I don't know, the main way that this game is differentiating itself from something like Assassin's Creed. So, yeah, it's interesting when you just... I mean, it's not so much to ask, but with these adaptations, you want the adaptation to be a secondary element. You want them to, hey, let's come up with a video game and put in unique elements that people haven't seen in other games. Let them get excited about that. And then occasionally we'll just remind you, yeah, you're in Lord of the Rings right now. And, uh, you know, maybe you'll meet one of the main characters. Maybe Gollum will show up. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, I super recommend that game. That's a good one. I think um, mm -hmm. one company that does really good with licenses is the Lego games. I think we mentioned Lego Batman. Yeah, yeah. Or, and even going back, those games used to not have any dialogue, if you remember. Like, the whole Star they did a Lego Star Wars Complete Saga... None of those games have dialogue, and those games are hilarious. Like, what they can do with just no voices, it's really unique. Yeah. Like, you, you see the same things that happen, but in really funny circumstances, because they're all Legos, and, like, it's not self-serious. It's not, like, trying to recreate, you know, force their, um, a new hope or anything. It's just trying to be silly. Like, it knows that yeah. it's a, a silly thing. Mm hmm I like when... I love all the Lego games. Yeah. Well, whenever they're going to do something that has, like, really, you know, effed up subject matter, and you're like, I wonder how they're going to handle, like, this character dying. <laughs> and it's always just, like, they make it goofy, and it's hilarious. Yep. They just, like, get bashed apart in <laughs> two million pieces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great game. The... I think on the, the flip side, um, I'd like to talk about, from my perspective, how much I... I don't care about the Warcraft movie. Oh my god, that movie yeah. looks weird and bad. I'm sorry, yeah, I, I mean, I think... Why do we care I, I about love these Warcraft. orcs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love Warcraft, but I every time I see him jump off that cliff and grab his sword in midair for no reason, why wasn't he just already holding it, and onto a griffin, and then just the orcs, it just it's so shiny and graphically overdone that it just seems tacky, and, and Blizzard is incredible with visual effects but they very rarely are able to come up with something that has any real consequential emotional impact so i honestly i'm not really it's not that i'm not looking forward to it i'll go see it i live right by a theater but i just don't care about it, it just kind of looks tacky to me 
Yeah, it's just another thing where, yeah, they're devaluing the original subject matter. Like, uh, frankly, if you're talking about the original War... I mean, I is it a remake of the original Warcraft games? It's the original Warcraft. It's the story like, is of the, Grom the original. Is it Grom and... Well, yeah, I mean... No, I it's, think it's like the original Warcraft, not... Okay. Yeah, I'd never played the original one. I just played Warcraft 2 and 3 and Frozen Throne. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I just... I don't know. I kind of think some of that stuff would be better done in a Game of thrones -y way than over-the-top action. I mean, there wasn't any over-the-top action in the games. It was RTS. But, um... I don't know. Other than, like, the armies facing off e against each other, the story aspect of those games where you're just focusing on the little, you know, the individual hero units, I mean, a lot of that stuff is just kind of... The stuff everybody skipped dialogue. over. Dialogue. Yeah. And that's <laughs> what the story is. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. Not expecting much. Oh. I just, I don't know. I don't see any. I think it's probably just pandering to the fact that they're somehow still making money off of Warcraft name, with World of Warcraft and whatnot. Yeah. It's like, well, we better get this out now before people stop caring. No. I mean, really, what what would happen if they put this out in a, another five years? Or World of Warcraft still get popular? Nope. I don't know. I mean, and maybe it will be. It's hard to say. It'll be popular enough, but it's not going to be. Popular enough to justify a movie, and one could argue that it's not now. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny that they're basing it off of the original Warcraft when World of Warcraft is so much more popular. Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, probably a lot of people who play World of Warcraft, like the major fan base for the Warcraft series now, the people who play World of Warcraft, probably, I mean, I don't know, they probably don't know any of that stuff. Yep. Bunch of kids. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for an anecdote this week, I was thinking we talk about our finishing moves. And by finishing moves, I mean say you're in a battle with your arch nemesis. Maybe it's like a monster or just a person who has wronged you in the past. You're in an arena with them or, or something. They've ambushed you. And you have to finish them off somehow. It can it can involve literally anything. Supernatural, science fiction, or not. I want to talk about finishing moves. Oh, and if, you, if you're in my Mass Effect stream from a while ago, we talked about these. But, but Brett, we never got, got to hear what your finishing move might be. Yeah, it's easy. I'd just uh, wrap them up in cement and put them in the ocean. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Hey, you like cement shoes? <laughs> He's a Nike. <laughs> with an extra pound of lead, you know, and then I'd put him in the ocean. Sleeping with the fishes. Alright. Now I'll come up with something better. What did, what did you say? Me? You want me to go first? Yeah. Yeah, do yours first, Jesse. Okay, so mine involves it, it's not so much that winning. This is dependent on me losing badly. And I like the idea of having Thing like a the ability to to like meta like metamorphize into a horrible monster when I have no other choice and it's something that like <laughs> it's like permanent and I it would like lead to my own death <laughs> so basically I'm getting I'm getting wailed on right and I'm just losing you know I, I put up an okay fight but then I, you know things are going awry and, and you know he's got he's got like a crowbar and he raises it up and, and then suddenly I start convulsing on the on the floor, like, and and he's like, "What the? I'm not even hitting you anymore." And I'm just like convulsing, and I start screaming and wailing, and I'm in pain because this process is painful for me. That's the whole point too. Is it's, it's terrible. It's something I would never want to have to, to do do on my own volition, but I have no other choice. And then I want to I morph into a giant spindly monster, like my arms and, and fingers elongate really long, and I and my legs, and I, and I just I turn into like a weird creepy scary monster and then I just murder him and then maybe I, I maybe then I'm thinking maybe I just die too after that <laughs> I just, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll die just maybe. I don't know I haven't figured it out <laughs> still working it out just like, you just like inject but I, just, a, I don't know why I just, it's, it's into your own neck like Wesker or something from Resident Evil <laughs> that's a better idea it's not something that I 
that I could control, but like that I always had, but like I have like a like a mutagen in like a syringe, and I know that I'm losing. So I'm like, well, might as well. And then I inject myself, and I turn into a spindly monster. <laughs> <laughs> and like and like I'll kill them, and it'll save the world. And then I'll turn, and and my wife will be off to the side, reaching out to me. And then a single tear will will drip <laughs> down my monstrous cheek, so so that people know he's still in there somewhere. And then I retreat into the shadows. <laughs> I like it. Um, so that opens it up to a sequel friend. too, because you know, like you're just off in the woods somewhere, and like maybe you know, <laughs> a sequel. Go off into Spindly the forest monster too. <laughs> They're like, Return to civilization. So, but they gotta, they gotta find the cure for you. <laughs> or it's like the first one was called Spindly Monster. <laughs> In Spindly Monster Two, it'll be you will you like won't be cured, but someone will convince you. Like they'll come out and they'll be like, "We need you. We need you again." To, there's a new threat. <laughs> And so you'll have to, like, reintegrate in society, but it'll just be, like, you, like, you'll try to fit in, it'll be you wearing, like, a long, like, suit coat, like, in a hat, like a, like a fedora or something over, like, your spindly frame, and you're back in town, and you're, like, <laughs> and, and no one, and everybody's afraid of you except, like, one little kid who comes up, and he's, like, He's like, hello, mister, and you, like, get down on one knee, and then her mom, like, ushers her away. She's like, don't talk to <laughs> And then you cry. Nobody again. loves me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I should have stayed in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I should have stayed in the woods. Jay Marino's going to realize that being all spindly ain't so friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Being all spindly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Keith, what's yours? I think that what what I would do is um is uh so so what would happen is uh so I go on the run for a while and then finally I'm in like I'm in my 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 hideout I'm I'm in my hideout and they manage to find me and uh, or no no I I change this. Like, I'm in my hideout, but then they threaten the people that I love, so then I, I come out and I, and I go and I confront them. And then they're, uh, but, you know, I'm at, I'm at this, like, he's like a kingpin or something, like a drug kingpin. And he's got his whole gang, gang there. And they say, they say, like, wow, brave man coming down. You, you come down to our, our neck of the woods, like, don't you know, what, don't you know what's going to happen? Don't you know what's going to happen to you? And, uh, like, how, what... What makes you think that you can stand up to us? And I say, well, you forgot one thing. <laughs> that I'm holding a thermal detonator. <laughs> and then I, like in Star Wars, and then I'll like crank it or whatever you do, and then I'll throw it and blow them all up and maybe myself too. So it's like a little <laughs> bit Star Wars, and a little bit like Walter White uh, <laughs> in like first season of Breaking Bad. But yeah, I think that's mine. <laughs> so are you going to are you going to say the C3PO line or are you going to pull it out after you say you forgot one thing um, and then one of the henchmen C3PO goes, Please? Yeah. One of the henchmen who I realize I'm like, "Oh, that's C3PO." After he says it, I'm like, "Wow." <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, "Yeah, I'm, I, I know, am." You've been putting up too much of the fight before that. <laughs> I, I I am holding it there. I am. He was he's right. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy that. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> I put my creative writing skills to work. Right, you don't need to put. I mean, you, just do you just, your. You, you wrap them up in cement and you put them in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty straightforward. It's a pretty right sick there. finishing move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking you guys were talking like Mortal Kombat style, like, oh, I'd, well, I'd chop both his legs off and then cut him right down the middle. You guys are talking like <laughs> that, can, that can work if that's what you want. You guys have want, a whole yeah. story. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason for this. I mean, well, you so can do that. My, it starts you just with my child. Work into a long, boring story. <laughs> like we did. It starts with my child getting kidnapped. <laughs> All right, so so I find the kidnapper. Let's just fast forward. I find the kidnapper in the top of the Empire State Building, and what I do is I lift him with just my pinkies. I lift him just with my pinkies, <laughs> and I say, "I can throw you a lot farther if I use all five fingers." <laughs> and so. I hold him over. <laughs> I know there's a big cage, but 
let's just uh, dis. What is it? Distance our belief, whatever. Uh, suspend disbelief, whatever. I'm gonna hold him over the edge of the Empire State Building at the top by my pinkies. I'm gonna say, if you don't tell me where my son is, I'm gonna use all five of these fingers. <laughs> all ten of these fingers. <laughs> five of them are tragically lost. <laughs> I'm gonna use all ten of my fingers. <laughs> And uh, so he's like, please, please, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. And so he tells me, and I say, sayonara, sucker. And I take him, <laughs> and I throw him all the way across to the uh, Manhattan. <laughs> and he splats up against the building and, and dies. And then I go get my son, and we see Batman. <laughs> a movie theater. In New now, York. Uh... If I can offer you like one criticism, I think um, it sort of made it a little bit better if you, uh, you know, like, wrapped him up in concrete and sunk him in the ocean. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, if I just follow my dreams. Like, if you want to get creative with it, maybe Don't you forget, can though. sort of pull an angel season three and then you turn him into a vampire first and then sink him into the ocean so he can't die and he just has to live in torment oh, under, under the water for forever. All right. Or yeah, until they pull out. them out of the ocean because they need... <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good one, too. <laughs> well, Maybe I'll, I'll do you that. forgot that your son is in the custody of your ex-wife. <laughs> My ex-wife. didn't really like you. You weren't a cool dad until now. <laughs> <laughs> because cause your ex-wife, she's, she's a real bitch. And she's just been filling his head with all kinds of lies and nonsense. She's saying, she's saying he's a deadbeat. He left you. But it turns out that she actually, she actually left you. And you were all, I mean, you've been sending money and you, you've always loved him. She's been, she's been cut, trimming, cutting off the top. And she's been taking her own cut of the, cut of the cheese. And... Cut of the cheese. <laughs> that that's, all about, that's what they say. Take, you guys know all about Max. I'm going to take my own. I'm gonna take a little cut, cut of the cheese at the top, <laughs> and then and he goes home, home after this ordeal, and he finds all the letters that you've been sending him that 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 his mother has been hiding in a locked in a locked trunk. <laughs> and you you didn't get any letters back for obvious reasons, but that didn't stop you. You kept writing every every day, <laughs> just to show how good of a person you are. <laughs> Yeah. Just to really reinforce how good of a person you are. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'd do. <laughs> I like that. Just a, a brief inconsistency, though. You said you'd throw him from the Empire State Building to Manhattan. But I'm pretty sure the Empire State Building is in Manhattan. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Brett. I threw him all the way around the world. <laughs> Immersion broken. <laughs> No stars. <laughs> yeah, I don't know a lot about the. Indie. What am I gonna say? I, I walked. I I jumped up on top of the Dunkin' Donuts and I hold them. I held them. And I said, "I'm gonna throw you to the third Dunkin' Donuts away if you don't give me my son." That's real far. Why do you suddenly have a weird accent? I threw him all the way down to Third Street. <laughs> a Papa Gino's best pizza in the city. Right, right, right there. <laughs> I was trying to be like Boston-y, you know, Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and I don't have much of a Boston accent. Boston. Sounds like a really good fleshed out. You think maybe we can like combine all these into one movie? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and we got all the major plot points. Oh so, yeah. Okay, so what would happen? Brett. <laughs> Brett holds a man by his pinkies, right? Throws him across. <laughs> throws him across, right? <laughs> and. One of then you his catches him. And... Son comes back to him after the kidnap. That's that's plot point number one, right? So he's rebuilding his broken life. Then his ex-wife then gets kidnapped because the son was no longer there to keep an eye on her. And mm. out of the goodness of of our of our joint protagonist, Hardy says, "I'm going to still rescue my ex-wife. I still love her, even though she kept my son from me for years." So you go and break into the building with a thermal detonator. Yeah. The drug and dealer is the one who, who captured her. Right. And then in your final battle with, with this drug kingpin who's beating you with a 
With a crowbar, crowbar you turn into a giant spindly monster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And retreat into the woods where you must live forever. Keep in mind, so far in this movie, we have not monster. implied that, like, supernatural things, that any of this exists. Like, this is just the first. <laughs> first this is the first you're hearing about it, like, near the end of the movie. Well, yeah, by this, the way, he's a spindly monster. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> he's made of thread. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so Simple I don't. Have have either of you you played de the first Dead Space? What I'm thinking of when I say spindly monster, do you know those big creepy? Uh, there's they're big spindly monsters. They're they're made of the little tiny creepy crawly ones all put together. I that's ex that's what I'm thinking of. I'm I think always think of the the <laughs> ice cream man from Constantine. I don't know. Like I've never even seen. <laughs> that's, Constantine. Yeah, that's a good one. I just know... The Keanu Reeves classic. <laughs> I just know that guy. I could post a picture in the chat, but That's... all the later viewers won't see it. You guys scared of Slenderman? <laughs> Slenderman? <laughs> Small Slenderman? Oh, man. That brings me back to my Ian Bretchford interview. <laughs> Hello, Slenderman. <laughs> you remember that? I loved Ian Bretchford. Oh, yeah. Brett used to... Brett has a couple inter interviews out there, or videos of him posing as someone named Ian Bretchford. It was a... It was a... poorly equipped interviewer, journalist. L look it up. Look up Ian Bretchford. Tell it as best <laughs> as you can. You'll find one, maybe two videos that you'll I love. I think there's only one. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Well, we're gonna get them thousands, millions of hits now. Now that we've given it the plug. <laughs> All right. Oh, here I found it. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the chat so people can see what I'm talking about. Oh God. That, that's the that's the spindly monster. Oh, okay. I was like, I just check it out. <laughs> people, in my damn video. Oh, damn. You're gonna, to, you're gonna have to link all these things. That, holy shit, that's yeah, that's creepy. <laughs> Ooh, that's you're spooky. Have to link all these in the YouTube chat so that everybody can really get uh, a sense. <laughs> I like the idea of somebody coming to the YouTube, um, the YouTube video, <laughs> thinking like, oh, I'm gonna watch the podcast, and the first thing they see is a comment by me that just says "spindly monster picture." Colon. <laughs> <And laughs> clicking on it and be like, Colin. "What does this have to do with anything?" <laughs> What this is like video games here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that was, a, that was a good podcast. So I apologize for my, my internet. I think pretty much everything I'm saying is coming in about a second later than you normally would hear it, which is a little frustrating for me. Everybody's so upset. Very upset. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't play me like that, I'm Brett. Upset, man. <laughs> Quitting this. But this is a good one. Next week, we'll think of some, some new topics, some new anecdotes. We hope you'll join us next week. Thanks for coming by. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. On you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Goodbye.